Today on the Cameron Journal Podcast, I am happy to be joined by Jackson Cooper. He has written a new book called Trainer X, My Career as Your Personal Trainer, where he recounts all the various and sundry stories of um, being people's personal trainer. Um, I, um, I kind of uh, laugh about... Um, uh this because when i first did this booking i'm kind of like well this will be fun you're a personal trainer and i make personal trainers cry because i can go to the gym four times a week and never lose weight um and usually the first thing people criticize me is the crime of being fat there's genocide happening in the world but i'm overweight and that's the real emergency so i figured this would be at least entertaining this might be embarrassing people on youtube might wonder why the hell is he on my show <laughs> that and it will be entertainment value views are views so welcome jackson to the cameron journal podcast well thank you for having me uh should be interesting i'm not used to talking about myself and don't worry i'm not going to come after you uh, <laughs> this was, it's okay this was, this was my career it's okay you can't do anything worse than anybody on twitter People call me all sorts of names. I used to get called Mr. Potato Head a lot. Now they've upgraded to Job at the Hut. I'm like, so I'm wealthy and have scantily clad people. It sounds like I'm living my best life and you're doing what? Um, so <laughs> why don't we start from the beginning? And why don't you tell us about um, yourself and what inspired you to write this book? Well, I was actually a ghostwriter for uh, another book for a friend of mine. He has... Uh very interesting life of methamphetamine use, uh, cooking methamphetamine, going to federal prisons, things like that. And I thought, you know what, if he can write this, put his story together, I should put my all, all of my tales together of all the years that I've done with dealing with people, their issues, their crap, putting all their needs first over, over my sanity, over my health, things like that. That's kind of what got me started. I started writing for his, being the ghostwriter for his book. And then uh, he kind of fell off of it, didn't want to write the ending for it. And I said, all right, well, then when you figure that out, I'll be over here writing my own thing. Very nice. Very nice. So uh, what? how did you get into the personal into the personal fitness space? What inspired you to, to do that as a job? Oh, it's a very tough industry. People don't know that. It's actually a very tough industry. Well, it's a tough industry only because – nobody ever explains to you the hours of operation. You know, mm. you're at everyone else's beck and call. You know, somebody wants to get up at 5 a.m. and train. You want to make a living. You want to make any money. Guess what you're doing? You're getting up at 4 o'clock to be at the gym by 5 o'clock to train them. And you better be spry. You better be chipper. You better be in their face if that's what they want. And then you got somebody else that wants to train at 9 o'clock. Then you got four hours of jack all to do. So, you know, it's a it's an interesting industry, and like you said, it's it's more demanding than I think what people view it as. But yeah. It kind of, no. It, it kind of it's, it's, yeah. No. I I've had I when I did local marketing, I had a small local gym that was a client, and I had several of their trainers that were also clients there, and uh, and I didn't you know, I didn't realize kind of how, just like you said, not just the hours, but the money situation is weird. And, you know, people come and go a lot. And so you kind of have to have this constant influx of new people, you know, you are never not selling yourself, you know, right. sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> and even from a marketing support perspective, that was different than a lot of other businesses where once you get up to a certain level, you know, you can kind of adjust things down or let some things go, you know, you can kind of change the mix. Whereas in the fitness space, it, it's, you got to do it all, all the time because you have to keep that constant flow. Absolutely. I've, I've trained on both ends of the spectrum and I've tried like hell to stay out of the bigger gyms. The uh, LA Fitnesses, the Urban Actives, the you know you name it, where it's a multi-level gym, uh, their pay structure sucks. The trainers are never happy with it, and I've gone into private gyms where you know I run the show. That's where my book kind of led leads you to is where you know I make it into the 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 golf industry, and mm. it's more privatized. So you've got more money coming in, you've got less clientele because it's private. You don't have the influx of people coming in 
constantly like you would in a public gym. So the, the pay scale is definitely a lot better. But yeah, the, the big gyms, the big meat markets, as I call them, yeah, the, you're open to the public. And if public doesn't like you, then they just move right on. So there goes your there goes your income, you know. Yeah, no, that is that is 100 100 percent true. So with all the how did you start to organize the stories of stuff that you had you had you had seen? What are some of the funny funniest ones you think about all the people you've ran across? Well, everybody's got gas, right? We all just uh, try to hold it in the best we can. Those are my best <laughs> funniest stories. <laughs> I've got women that try to do, you know, sit ups and let it out. And I was, had to be the professional, had to just mow over it and act like nothing happened, but they're laying there on their back, turning beat red, just all embarrassed. I'm just like, it's fine. Just keep going. Good job. Good, j- good set, whatever. You know, those are some of the comical ones, but uh, you know, people dropping weights on their faces, not under my watch. I'll tell you a funny story from the book is I had a, a girl, she was kind of a, I don't know what you would call her, but she was heavy into corn and one of those, oh, yeah, man, one of those yeah. type of people. And uh, I had her three or four or five sessions and she knew how to do everything. She says, yeah, man, I tried to do what you taught me at home this weekend. And I lifted the 15 pounds up and got it up over my face. Bam, hit me right in the nose. And uh, she came in on Monday or whenever it was, she came in next and she had a big old black eye and she says, you know, this is why I pay you to do this. I don't know why I did this shit on my own. But, you know, stories yeah. like that are full. I mean, that's one of the things I included in the book. At the end of every chapter is at least one comical story. And probably the best one, I'd not to give you a spoiler alert, but I had a, uh, a doctor that I had never trained before. And I was to see him on Monday. And he was also invited to a wedding that my... Uh, brother-in-law was putting on or he was involved in and he showed up to the wedding I didn't know he was there I'd never met him before and I was wearing a tuxedo I was in one of the one of the suits so I had free reign to do whatever the hell I wanted you know so I'm I'm pretty lit on the dance floor and I'm having a good time and he comes up throws his his arm around my shoulder and said hey Lane I guess we got a appointment on Monday and I turned grabbed his belly shook it I said, yeah, we do. And that's all I remember. <laughs> all I, remember. I, I spun around and just kept on dancing. I didn't think anything of it until Monday morning came around. And I, I was sober, obviously. And I saw his wife at the club and I said, you know, I'm really sorry I did that to him. He's like, yeah. It would like if it would be the same story as if uh, one of his clients or he walked up to one of his clients and grabbed him by the, the breast and said, well, we're going to work on these come Wednesday. We'll see you then. So I'm like, <laughs> oh, shit. Well, yeah. <clears throat> I was wearing a suit. I was good to go. Thought I was under the guise and the protection of that, but he got really offended by it. Never saw him again. So it is what it is. Yeah, that's that's quite that's quite quite difficult. That's definitely quite quite difficult. I don't I don't know if I I I think I asked this question, but I don't think we quite got the answer. How did you get involved in this industry? Uh. I've always been an active kid, always been an active person, always involved in different sports. A touch of ADD, I guess, brought me to liking that than I did school. So when I got out of high school, I said, the hell with this. I'm done with school. I don't want to do anything else associated with school. I'm going to make money. I want to buy things, all that shit that comes with getting out, graduating, and not wanting to have anything to do with school anymore. Long story short, at 24, I went back to college and started running track for the college that I went to again and decided that I'd go into personal training, kinesiology, and got my degree from that. So I didn't start into the world of personal training itself till I was about 28 years old. And then uh, then on, it was 13 years of it until people eventually rode me out of it, wearing (laughs) me down, taking away my personality and my, you know, my energy for the, for the job. So yeah, so let's dig in, let's dig into that. How did you get to a place where you were done and decided to move on? I think it came when my second child was born. You know, mm. the wear and tear of staying up late or getting up having disturbed sleep, not having great sleep with one child, and then the second one came along, and there was just a lot of juggling going on. There was 
somebody's got to be here for the first one. Someone's got to take this one to the second thing we've got to do. And what time are you going to be home? You can't take that client because that goes into our evening. And, you know, the kids really threw me into a, a blender, so to speak. And to go in day in and day out and to listen to these people bitch about don't don't be so hard on me today because uh, I was out drinking last night. <laughs> so then I got mod- I got to modify their workouts and they they've got problems with their ex husband and I got to hear all about that and it wasn't. Are you the trainer or the therapist or a little bit of both? Exactly. It turned into me being being the therapist but not getting paid therapist wages. <laughs> So that yeah. really, that really took its toll, and it really burned me out. That I just, I felt like I was losing myself, and I wasn't giving myself to them, and they weren't really giving me their everything. So I just got, got really tired of it. Yeah, it is. I'm not surprised any any of those um, massage therapy, personal training, all that type of thing. They have about a ten year lifespan. <laughs> in terms yeah. of people do them hands-on for about 10 years and then they either build a business and have other people working on it and they have like their four or five people that they love and they're on the business side or they leave and go do something else entirely. <clears throat> um, You find a lot of former massage therapists at physical um therapy offices. They quit massage therapy, go back to school, become physical therapists, and then they're, you know, f- healing knees and frozen shoulders and all this type of thing. So um, well, that's, actually, I'm, that's actually a good thing. I'd rather have someone that used to be a massage therapist turn physical therapist, work on me than just a physical therapist. I could share so many stories of people that have come to me over the years and they they're coming from physical therapy saying, I don't know why the hell I'm even going. What's what's the point of this? And so to me, physical therapy has always gone by the book. They've always gone by their set standard. They can't do anything above or beyond. And I'll share you a story that I put in the book. Uh, Recently I had neck issues and I can't explain how it, how it hurt, but it was debilitating. It would wake me up in the middle of the night for several hours, et cetera. Long story short, I go to a physical therapist and she just starts pushing my neck backwards and trying me to, trying to get me to do reps of this exercise. And it just hurts like how she's, well, we got to push through that. We got to get you through that. Come to find out I had a lesion on the back of my spine that was pushing against the nerve. So all this, all this pressure here going backwards was just doing the exact opposite of what I should have been doing. Mm. So, you know, somebody in massage therapy might have had a better modality in, in helping me in, in that er- arena, but not to shit no, on all. No, that therapists. makes sense. Yeah. yeah. No, that, that makes, that makes sense. Yeah. Life, you know, life, life does change and it is, you know, when you have kids, you can't be, available at odd hours you really have to have you know some more structure and hmm, i can see how that would uh be difficult so what do you do now what did you transition into well i left that industry i tried not to jump without a parachute i tried not to leave without just an, a backup plan right but what i did was i found a member that was interested in me to open up one of his uh diet and diet coaching franchises. And the promise was that if this one got up and rolling, I would be partial owner in the second one that he opened up. Um, So I left there, did two weeks of training away from my own family and things like that out in Minnesota. And that was gonna be my, my future. I would be invested in something else. And it just didn't happen. It was the same thing. It was even more hours. It was gonna be even more hours but it just kind of snowballed into the spiral of depression that I got into from just being just done with the fitness industry, more or less. Hmm. Yeah. Well then, so where did you land after that? So from there, I quit that. And then I moved into, I got an idea. Let's just work with my hands. I like working with my hands. So I became like a, a special project maker. I made up a business on Facebook. You see it on the internet. You can provide me a picture. I'll build it for you. 
So it's like a, a background in carpentry and started working with that. And it just kind of tumbled into handyman stuff and I'm busier than I've ever been. So no, that's really cool. Out. Yeah. So, uh, you know, a good handyman is worth his weight in gold. Like as someone who's always lived in old houses and old properties where there's always something going wrong, a good handyman is worth his weight in gold. So yep. it's you, no, you that's get in really with cool. the right you get in with the right old old lady and she'll tell all your friends tell all her friends about you and then you're you're set. So you're in, yes. <laughs> no, that's that's 110% true. So when it comes to uh when it comes to personal training and diet and fitness and all this type of thing we spend a fuck ton of money on all that stuff and it never seems to do any good what is what's what's the secret what is what leads that industry to never seem to solve people's problems or what do people do that never seems to help them reach their goals what is what is it with all that the honest answer if you want the honest answer i do is that everybody gives up on themselves. I've seen it for the 13 years that I've that I've done the training and done the dietary talks and things like that. I'm not a registered dietitian, so I can't prescribe them what exactly they need to eat per calorie, but I can give advice. And I talk a lot about it in the book about how just that part of it was also a part where I just hit my head against the wall. Just people don't listen. They don't want to we're all human beings. I get that. I have my cravings. I have my snacks, all that, that, that bring me joy. And I'm not trying to take that away from anybody. And I didn't through my entire career, but the whole point to your question is that people give up on it. They come to a trainer. They think I got this trainer. I'm going to be here, you know, three days out of the week for an hour. Well, how many hours are still left in the week that you can go fuck yourself up that I'm not with you. Yeah. So I've always told people that, but that's, that's the base of it is that people just give up on themselves. They want the trainer to do everything for them. And they figure once they go to him and they, he kicks their butt or she kicks their butt, that that's, that's it. That'll take care yeah. of it. Well, then they go home and they, they still eat their high calorie garbage and they still like their sweets and they still, they still enjoy things. They just don't, they never tip that scale fully all the way over to, to make it a habit and a lifestyle. No, it, it that's one of the reasons I I quit powerlifting. I I was one of those dudes who did Atlas stones and all that fun stuff um cuz oh, cool. I had the build for it. Yeah. And so I was in the gym 4 days a week for 2 hours. It was and it it is a whole like that was a whole lifestyle. Like I could live the rest of my life and never see a plate of chicken and broccoli ever again. Um, in fact, someone says that for dinner and I'm like, no, I refuse. I will not eat. Like, I don't care. I'm not wasting away. I am good. Um, and it is, I mean, yeah, like, and especially like you go to like, like powerlifting competitions, all this type of thing. People come in, people don't believe this. People really come in with coolers full of food so that they can still eat at exactly the same time that they're supposed to all this type of thing. It is a whole, it consumes your whole life. You build everything you do around all of that in terms of when you're working out what you're eating what you're not eating you know how much water you're consuming how much sleep you're getting it is it is all consuming absolutely yes, all that's, consuming. that's funny that you bring that up that's that's what i would call the machine people those are yeah. the strict regimen the this is my lifestyle yes i i work in a factory or i work in an office or a daycare provider whatever it is but at exactly this time, I'm eating this, and I've prepared my meals for the, the entire week, and my wife is behind me on it. She does her thing, too, and I mean, those are the machines. Those are the diehards. Those are the dedicated. The people that I trained throughout the years, they weren't like that. They were the ones that did the lifestyle of the way they wanted to live, how they wanted to spend their time, how they wanted to eat, and then they sprinkled in the fitness in there. And it was just completely opposite. They were more disciplined on the bad shit they were doing and <laughs> not so disciplined on the stuff that you know, they should have been taking care of themselves with more. So it was yeah. Just yeah. And it was, it was for me, you know, I, I mean, I think in an ideal world, um, 
where biology was on our side, it would be really cool if you could just kind of, you know, do whatever, eat whatever, work out a couple days a week and not have a problem. I Friends that I have, and I have many of them, who can eat whatever and never gain a pound, I don't like them. I don't know why I'm friends with them. Um, <laughs> you know, um, and, and I mean, in an ideal world, that would be the way it works. But the sad, the sad thing is if you want to lose a lot of weight or maintain a certain amount of fitness or whatever have you, the human body just doesn't work that way. And it is like, you really do have, like you have to go all in and like, you know, don't shop the middle of the grocery store. I always tell people, I said, I said, you know, I said, I'm never down the aisles. I just shop along the edges because that's where the actual food is. Right. Um, and, uh, and I, uh, and I told, I said, it, it is, you have to go all, all in. And I said that as someone, I wrote an essay years ago called, I have a series of essays called, hi, my name is Cameron. And one of them was called, hi, my name is Cameron and I'm fat. And I talked about how like puberty hit me like a ton of bricks. I shot up eight inches in a summer. I also magically gained a bunch of weight, could never lose it. That also to do with some medical stuff. <clears throat> um, cause I did corticosteroids for years with asthma and that screws up a whole bunch of systems that are really important for losing weight and all this type of thing. And I was talking about all the iterations and machinations that I've gone through and it's, and I don't know, you know, if you ever found this, but it is, I am always shocked at the um, seeming amount of effort it takes to get the human body to do anything <laughs> to make any change it just seems like it 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 just is very resistant to 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 that did you ever find that was that ever something you ran into or are you one of those magical people that can your body does stuff for you <laughs> i was always a little bit of both in my in my youth i was the kid that could eat everything not gain a pound but as as you age your your body chemistry you make up starts to teeter and waffle and move around a little bit. And if you don't get the right foods in that make you feel satiated, then yeah, you're grabbing for those chocolate bars and candy bars and everything else. So I'm guilty of it. I mean, I've got the dad bod now, but I'm still able to train as hard, if not, you know, a little bit with more weight in the gym that I, that I used to, but yeah, it's, I've got the dad bot. It all of a sudden hit me one, one year I'm looking at, pictures from vacation I'm like Jesus Christ man and I don't know where it came from they say you're you get married and you get fat and happy but you know it's it's easier to, to use that excuse than it is to say well it's because of the bowl of ice cream I eat every night or you know <laughs> just take get a page out of my book and yeah well and there's also just like the amount of like you don't know, like, especially with small children, is there's tons of food, there's tons of snacks around. It's very easy to unconsciously eat when there's just, like, constant stuff around, you know, that, you know, and you just end up, you know, eating a little bit here, eating a little bit there. It adds up, you know, it doesn't take long. It does. Um, it does. I'd, I'd use the example of my dad. He, uh, you know, mom says, I got I to gotta change his diet. I got to get him to eat better. I said, mom, he'll eat whatever is laying around. So whatever's on the counter, whatever's in the cabinet, he's going in there, he's grabbing. That's just his habit. He's going in and taking it. So if you put, you know, different stuff out there, I mean, not saying dad's a big, dumb animal, but, you know, if you put different stuff in there, he's going to go in and go, huh, here, I'm going to eat this then. And magically his weight would come off, but, you know, mom likes their, her sweet stuff and knows what makes dad happy and knows what he wants in the in the cupboard so you know like i said we're all human i never really chastise anybody for for being overweight i was always just more on the helping side i you know i was more of a drill instructor when it came to weight training and conditioning and and things like that but i never hounded on anybody for you know what they chose to eat if they came to me with a sob story of well you know we ate pizza the other night and it was really good i just shrug it off and yeah you ate pizza don't come to me and say, well, I'm not losing any weight and it's your fault. You know, <laughs> now that's still in the back of my mind, you know, that I know what you're eating. I know what you're doing. I know the alcohol you're drinking. I'm prepared for that conversation when it comes, but they never really came at me with, you know, I'm not losing weight because of you. So. Yeah, no, I, I never, I, I remember the last guy I had, he was the owner of the gym 
and that I who he was a client and so we worked out we would usually have a business meeting and then work out for two hours so I could I could be at his place three four hours a day and um and I was you know I was working with all these businesses I was all over town all this type of thing and he's kind of like he's kind of like you know are you like you know like you know just eating tons of terrible stuff at home and I'm like no I'm never home like I because I I had like 15 20 clients all along this certain part of town i'm like i'm never home i leave here and it's like i've got one client i'm reorganizing her whole retail store i've got one lady over here who's starting a hair salon i've got coffee shop guy over here like i'm busy sir i don't have time to be eating junk because i'm constantly with people you know all this type of thing and so it was um yeah it's i think there's a lot of I don't know, a lot of intimidation and whatnot that goes on. You actually seem nice and like not aggressive and all this type of thing. But so many other people are just so and, and I think also when it comes to fitness and obesity, we just we as a society just kind of look down on overweight people. It's kind of the last group that everyone can look down their noses at and nobody cares. Cause no one's it's like smokers. No one's coming to defend smokers. No one's coming to right. defend fat people. You know, right. nobody is coming to that defense. Um, so it's, it's a, it's a difficult, it's a difficult thing, I think. Um, well, it is. And you talked about, uh, you brought up something that I'd like to discuss about the, the different trainers that are out there. I dedicated a big chunk of my book to that as I'm, as I'm writing it, I'm thinking I need to, you know, anybody who's reading this is probably thinking it's a, it's a how-to guide. And then uh, it's not a how-to guide. It's just my experiences. So I'm, I'm, I was a teacher for personal training at a local college, and I did that for two years on etiquette, protocol, as far as where to stand, uh, how to spot people, and things like that. Anatomy, physiology. I taught all that, and the different types of people. It's like a crapshoot when you go to a gym. So I try to try to give my two cents on the trainers that you know if you're in the hoodie and you're walking around and you you're worried more worried about your meal plan and what you got to do than you are worried about your client or you're flirting with some girl or some guy across the gym while you're training your client then maybe this isn't the business for you you know there's like you said there's so many different personalities you can get when you when it comes to personal trainers and I appreciate the fact that you could tell that I'm I'm nice. I'm genuinely a nice guy. And that's what got me into trouble as far as allowing people more into my head while they were working out and it led to my burnout. It was just me being too nice. But you know, I like to I like to develop a rapport with that person. I don't just want to treat them as uh an income coming in, you know. So yeah. I tried to befriend them and I guess I wanted more out of the relationship than they did. It was just, a, it was just a funny, funny way for me to exit is that I just got tired of not being listened to by these people. I I've known them for how many years I got continuous clients that continuously come back to me and they would come in and they would watch the TV as we were training and it just drove me nuts. But there I was still being the nice guy, but they were still sweating and they were still getting a workout out of it. I still put them through the rigors, but I don't know. It was a, it was a double-edged sword. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, the, how, why, so do you think that the mental health issues you had were primarily just because people are lazy, <laughs> you know, and they just, you know, they just don't, rare is the person that really commits. Yeah, I'd say so. Uh, a lot of the people that I trained, I would think, like the idea of saying that they had a personal trainer. So they could tell all their friends, well, I worked out with, with Jackson down in the weight room or down in the gym. And, well, I got to go see Jackson a little bit, you know. And uh, that that came across in their workouts. It's like they would huff mm -hmm. and puff, and you would know exactly where they were off to. They were going to go out, stay out till 2 in the morning, go into strip clubs to entertain clients. Or they were going to go upstairs and eat a a big over calorie dinner or they were going to go get drunk somewhere on the golf course or you name it you knew that's what they were going to do you yeah. know but yeah people being lazy they choose their ways to be lazy it's like i made the the reference in my book about the people that will pay 
any amount of money for their golf game. I mean, stupid amount of money for their golf game. But when it came to taking advice from me and how to make them stronger and better in their golf game, they were like, nah, there's more work in that. I don't really want to fuck with that. So I'm not going to do what you tell me to do. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I always say people, human beings being an apex predator, we are exquisite at preserving energy. Our brains take a lot of calories to run. The brain is the biggest calorie user. Although I write and think all the time and it obviously has done nothing for me. Um, and uh, um, I always say like the brain uses the most calories. I've never benefited from this. And uh, so we're, we're very good at preserving energy. Um, and that's why, you know, I always tell people, I said, your your whole system is trained to preserve energy and hang on to it so really the only way to do anything with it is to just simply not have the input you know it's that of all the ways in various and sundry ways i attempted to lose weight as the years have gone by this regrettably the only thing that really has ever worked or kind of kept things in check is just kind of simply not consuming people always want to say and people laugh when i say i don't eat and people are kind of like how's that possible i said i literally i only eat twice a day i said i literally just don't it never goes in so it never becomes a problem um and i said but it's like if i ate like a normal person i said yeah, they'd be bringing me out of here with a tow truck um and so uh it's a whole you know it's it, it's you kind of have to you know attack it from both both directions and you're right if you're if you're drinking a lot staying out late not sleeping because that's when all your body does all the healing all this type of thing then your fitness journey is not going to go very far <laughs> no. no no it's not and it, it, it always it doesn't have to come down to the eating uh my biggest thing throughout the years is that when people like you gave yourself an example is i don't i don't eat that much and going back to my training days and what I would tell those people is that, you know, you need to eat steadily and I equate it to having constantly putting logs in the furnace. Yeah. And if you put the right, right logs in there, then it'll steadily burn. Your metabolism will steadily burn. But if you take a big log and throw it in there, it's going to go wee and burn it all out. And then you're going to be down to ashes again. So when it takes that, when it takes that next big log, it's going to burn it real quick and then it's going to go back out again. And when you got a slower metabolism, then everything that comes in just doesn't get, you know, utilized the way that it should. And people never really grasp that concept. They thought I was thinking, I got to eat five big portions of this huge plate all day, every day, five times a day. And it's like, no, 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 that's, that's not how I want you to eat. But like I said, no. I explained it, explained it in the book that trying to get someone to eat differently is like trying to change them from a man to a woman i mean it's just it's just not that easy it doesn't just go bing bing you know, no. it's a long drawn out process no that that has been my la my latest project is no more like 12 to 14 hour fasting marathons which was my way for years and years um i is it because you're absolutely right especially you know i I metabolize things so slowly. I even take larger amounts of certain medications because it takes a long time to weave its way through the system, which yeah. on the one hand, I will probably survive the zombie apocalypse um, <clears throat> because while everyone else is dying of starvation, I'll be kind of like, I'm fine. Um, and uh, all the same thing, but it is, yeah, it, you do have, and I think you also have to understand what works for your body and your genetics and your physiology. And I think a lot of people apply a lot of one size fits all solutions that doesn't work in harmony with what you got going on. Um, and so it's no, I mean, that's sound advice. It's yeah. It's sad that you've left the industry. We need like a hundred more of you like with that, you know, that sort of, that sort of attitude. I think that is what is necessary and proper in this space. It is. I tried to recreate mini me's when I was at the college. I tried to instill in them every everything. I tried to create myself into them and whatnot. Uh, but it's it's a hard thing to do. Um, thank you. I appreciate that. I I really didn't want to leave the industry, but in the same token, I, I like I said, I just got burnt out. I couldn't take the people treating me as they did, and me just having to roll with the punches just because I needed the income. 
Yeah. And you know, so it is, it is what it is. I, I tried, uh, I, sh I shared a story in the, in the book about trying to dip my toes back in those cold fridges waters. And, uh, mm -hmm. didn't go I did. well. it didn't go well. I quickly recoiled and said, Nope, fuck that. Never again. These people yeah. out here, just, just the way it is. So I yes, tried. Meanwhile, meanwhile, you're over at Mrs. McGinty's with your hammer fixing her table. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> listen, listen to her talk to me while I'm trying to focus on something else. So it's the same thing. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. This crown molding won't miter box itself. That's, <laughs> that's fun. All right. Well, we're at the point of the show where we do plugs. So why don't you tell us where we can uh, find your book and where we can find you online to keep up with you? Right. Well, most uh, my links on uh, Facebook and Instagram are all are both Trainer X, Trainer X book. Sorry, all one word. Uh, and it's Jackson Cooper on Facebook. Uh, you can find my book on Amazon if you type in Trainer X book, Jackson Cooper. Um, and you can email me at uh, Trainer X book at yahoo.com. I'd love to hear more stories from people. I'd love people to engage in my Facebook page just to hear stories. Uh, I know there's plenty more of me out there that are just willing to be like oh my god i had this lady in the other day and that idiot blah 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 or i had this, <laughs> had this guy come yeah. in told the meathead you know I'd, I'd love to hear more stories like that i know there are a ton of them out there but yeah yeah no it's uh no that's that's fantastic well thank you for coming on the cameron journal podcast it was a pleasure to have you thanks a lot for having me That's all for this episode of the Cameron Journal Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Visit us online at CameronJournal.com. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I love to talk to my followers and listeners, so please feel free to uh, get us on social media at Cameron Cowan on Twitter. And we'll see you next time on the Cameron Journal Podcast. Mm -hmm.